runners are great for setting the foundation for any table setting for any special occasion. I'll show you how to make a quick and easy table runner using fabric samples. Now you could use remnants, but I like fabric samples for two reasons. They usually come with finished edges and they come pre-cut so that you don't have to do any more cutting. So that's great. It's, it takes a less time and uh, it's easier for you to handle. Now, you can get fabric samples in flea markets or thrift stores or online or even in your local fabric stores. One thing I want to remind you of is when you're buying or when you're getting your fabric samples, wherever you're getting them from, make sure you check fabric content. Even if you're using remnants of fabrics, you need to check your fabric content. You do not want to mix 100% cotton with 100% polyester. You're going to have shrinkage on one side, cotton is going to shrink, the polyester won't shrink, then you're going to have some puckering going on, okay? So you do not want to mix fabric contents like that. You want to stay consistent with your fabric content, okay? So get yourself your fabric samples. Depends on the length that you need, you choose your fabric samples. You're going to put the right sides together. Then the aim is to create a panel that you're going to use for your table runner. So you put your right sides together and you stitch your panels together. You need to have your iron handy because you're going to need to iron those seams. Each seam that you join fabric samples together you're going to iron the seam so you can have flat seams and you have a nicely finished product okay so you join your samples together to create a large panel after you've created your panel you're going to want to line it to create that more professional look so you can use broad cloth or you can use a lining fabric you're going to put your lining fabric on your surface. Then you're going to put the panel that you've created on top. Then you're going to cut along the edges to cut the size that you need for the liner. Then before you stitch, make sure you have the right side of the panel you've created together with the right side of the lining. Then you are going to stitch along the edges and you keep stitching until you get to the last section. You're gonna have to leave an opening because we're not done. We're gonna have to invert what we've stitched together. So we need to have an opening. This opening is just a little less than a halfway between the two points, big enough to invert the panel. So we're going to put our hands inside, much like we do when we invert a pillowcase. We're going to hold on to the two far corners and we're going to invert. So we turn what we've stitched together, the liner and the panel, we've turned it inside out. So we are now seeing the right side of our liner. We're getting close to the finish. For the corners, we could just use a seam ripper and gently pull them out. But if you're afraid that you're going to damage your fabric, what you could do is just use your scissors, closed of course, and go back through the opening that we left and push your hand all the way to the corners and you're just going to gently push the corners out so you have a nice corner. If the fabric on the corners is too much and it creates a bulk, then before you invert your panel, you could actually clip off the excess fabric, making sure that you're not cutting the stitch so we get our corners out 
And we have our panel that has been lined. Now we're going to have to iron again. We're going to iron the whole runner. We're going to iron on the edges just to create that flat finished look. And it's better if you can actually use a steam iron. When you get to the corner where we have the opening, you're just going to flip the same amount of fabric that was stitched here. You're going to flip that inside and you're going to steam that edge. Okay, so you're going to steam it. Now what we could do to finish off this opening is we could get a coordinating trim and we could stitch the trim on top here. In that way, we would be stitching this together so we would close off the opening nicely and we'd have a nice trim on the edge that we would have to then add to the other edge. Or we could use a fuse hem. This is what you can use to fuse materials together and we could just put it in between here and uh, use our iron because you have to apply heat use our iron to just iron this between the two pieces of fabric fabric at the the opening so we iron and then what happens is that the fuse will melt and actually acts almost like a glue to fuse the fabrics together okay and there we have it we have fused the opening together so now we don't have any opening there and we have created a great table runner here is the finished product in place a lovely table runner made from fabric samples you don't need a lot of fabric to make a great table runner just a few pieces of fabric samples or a couple pieces of remnants stitch the fabric pieces together and create a lovely table runner